Hello, welcome back to St. Michael's Hill. Um, on today's video, I'm going to be adding an end of train light um, to this brake fan that is part of the um, nuclear flask train that I have for the layout. Um, I made a couple of videos about converting barrier wagons, um, which can be seen at the uh, I button above, um, but this uh, brake van is going to form part of the train and it would be great to get a, a an end of train light on it. So the lights I'm talking about are the um, little red flashing lights that are generally in a white kind of box and are attached to the back of all the trains. I'm sure any train um, at the moment that uh, is freight train or whatever will have one of these lights on the back, so I'm sure you're familiar with them. Um, what I'm using to do that is the uh, DCC Concepts uh, DML EOT end of train lamp pack kit. So effectively, they um, it's one pack that's got three sets of uh, lamps in, um, and then all the wiring for it. Um, there are no instructions in the pack. However, if you go online uh, to the DCC Concepts website, there is a full. Um, wiring diagram and instructions uh, for owner's money about the kit. So I'm going to be following this uh, diagram to get the end of train lamp in position. Um, I'm not going to be using a function decoder um, just because I probably want these to be running at all times, uh, at least initially. Um, However, this potentially will uh, change in the future, and I can always add a function decoder into the circuit if I need to. Um, so effectively, the power is either DC or DCC that's drawn up from the track through the uh, through the axles on the uh, wagon or carriage or whatever you want to do, and then the lighting goes into the end of train control, which uh, is basically a switch that allows you to choose which rate of flash you want, um, and then one section or one set of wires come out to the hall trigger. Um, mm. Other uh, wires go straight up to the uh, lamp and there's basically a nano LED in there that is polarity sensitive. So it needs to be wired correctly and using a resistor. So everything that is required for this is in the pack. So what I'm going to do in this video is run through how I'm going to do that. Uh, how I'm going to put it all together. Um, first of all, I'm going to try a bit of a dry run um, just on the rails. So rather than fitting it to the wagon, I'm just going to make sure it works um, through the rail. And then I'm going to find a way of attaching it here. So I'm generally, well, with these brake wagons, it should be um, placed here. Um, so I just need to find a way then to store the electronics and run wires to them. So I'm thinking uh, the best thing is going to be obviously inside of the main compartment here, all the wiring and the switch and everything will be. Um, and then the wiring will either run under the chassis and then up uh, through the uh, section here or alternatively um, be up one of these ridges into the roof and then back down in. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get the pack out open, see what's inside of it, and then uh, get it all working. And then I'll move on to how I'm going to modify the uh, brake van to accommodate everything. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see a working end of train lamp and the uh, nuclear flask train will be fully complete. So when you get the pack open, this is what it contains. So there's um, a load of springs that could be used for pickups for power, three magnets um, that are all placed on top of each other here. Um, there's a pack of resistors and then uh, a bunch of wires. So the, these are the uh, uh, hall triggers. Um, this is the wiring that goes into the um, end of train control, which is these sections here. Each of these has a small uh, switch on the end here that you can switch to control the pacing of the lights. And then you've got the lights themselves that are wired up, uh, or at least have wires coming out the back of them already. So 
Um, it's just going to be a case of getting one of these units uh, set up to do a test run on some DCC power. So I've now split out everything that uh, I need for this test run. Um, I'm not going to use any pickups because I'll just uh, test the wires straight onto the tracks. And um, I'm basically going to be just testing the lamp first, so I'm not going to worry about the whole trigger at all. So it's quite a simple um, circuit, effectively. I need to um, plug the, um, the these wires into the end of train controller. And then there's going to be uh, the black wire and the red wire are the positive and negative on the track. And the, um, I believe it's the orange and the green, orange and purple, sorry, that are going to go to the uh, the light um, with a resistor in, uh, in the sequence. So they supply various uh, strength resistors, so you can choose which uh, you want. The, and once I've tested that, I will uh, look into wiring everything up uh, and getting pickups through the, uh, the axles on the uh, brake van. One thing I'm not sure of is whether I will use the Hall trigger or not. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it does. It seems that it's a, mag, uh, a magnet um, based thing. So if the, um, if the uh, wagon runs over the magnet, it will turn the... Uh, the end of train light on and off. It's not something I, I think I need really. Um, so I will probably just work it in without that. And if I need to add the hall trigger, that can be done at a later date. My main focus for this uh, is it's something I've not done before, is just to get a working end of train light when there's DCC power um, or DC power um, through the track. So that's that's my plan. So I'm going to take one of these lamps now. Um, I'm going to probably do this off camera. It's a fairly simple um, task to wire it up and test it. So I'm just going to test it off camera. Um, and then I'll, I'll get back to you once that's been done. And I'll show you how it's looking. So I've managed to take the body off the chassis uh, when it comes to the brake van. Um, it is a very fiddly thing. Um, the There's lots of uh, um, kind of of this uh, kind of railing and stuff that's connected both to the body and the chassis. So I've managed to remove the, the large bits on the side fairly easily. However, the uh, ones on the end here, you can see that uh, I've broken up one or two, um, one off each end. Um, it's not a massive deal. I've got all the bits, so it's just a case of a little uh, polystyrene cement to fix that once it's complete, but it is pretty tricky. Um, but what it does leave us with is uh, a bit of a recess that we can put the electronics in. Um, there is the chassis here, and then there's another panel uh, here which goes on top of the weight, um, and then the uh, main body goes on top. So I'm going to probably have to not drill a couple of holes in this sheet to allow the um, electronics to run through the body. Um, so I'm going to get on with that now. So the other thing that needs to be done is a hole drilled in the uh, main body. The light is going to be placed around here. The wires are going to then um, come through, through here um, and then probably into the body. Uh, where the rest of the electronics are going to be. should be a fairly simple job and the wiring so small that it will only take kind of 0.1 or 0.2 mil drill bit to uh, get that in. So it's not a massive, uh, massive hole. Then most of the electronics will happen in here and I'll need um, a couple of holes probably uh, in, the, in the chassis. One for the, uh, the hole switch and another um, for the pickups. So with the pickups, I've added um, a spring to the uh, to the body uh, to the so to the axle, and then I'm just going to need a little bit of uh, conductive paint to take it to the wheel, and then we're in. Um, and then you can see where the spring uh, comes up. That's where we will uh, solder um, to the uh, wiring that comes down. So hopefully. Everything will be up and running and uh, I'll be able to show you it. So I'm going to do that. 
So I've now soldered the circuit into place. So all the uh, the purple, white, and yellow wires are, are soldered and insulated uh, to the uh, same color that goes to the switch. Um, I have soldered um, the light to the uh, orange and gray wires and then the red and black wires I have left um, free so I can just try them on this piece of track here. Uh, let's try and find a way that you can see that. So now I'm going to show you what's happening when I complete the circuit by um, attaching the red and black wire to each side of the track which is fed from a DCC controller. Um, the black wire is currently making contact, so when I hit the red wire onto the track, we'd expect to see a flashing red light. Um, however, when I hold the uh, red wire onto the track, there is a, a momentary light, and then it stops. Um, I can create a flash by multiple times hitting the red wire onto the track, but if I hold it in place... It does not flash. Um, I'm not exactly sure why at this stage. I'm going to have a look into that and see if I can find what might be happening. It might be that even just holding it like this is just not a great connection. I might try soldering it to the rail just to see briefly if that is something that is causing it. But effectively, the light works and then stops straight away. Just going to interrupt this video a second to explain what the solution to this problem was as I didn't get it on film. Um, what was happening was the circuit was absolutely fine. Once a connection was being made, um, it just needed the hall trigger to be uh, triggered by a magnet. So I tested this by soldering the black and red wires to each rail and then uh, using the magnet, placing it over the hall trigger briefly and uh, the circuit worked. So I've now taken apart the uh, circuit briefly and I'm going to uh, basically fit the lamp. So I'm going to place the lamp here. I'm going to drill a small hole uh, in this back section here for the wires to come through. And then they are going to um, slide in through here and into the main uh, body section where all the electronics is going to be held. The other thing I will need to do at some point is um, take the chassis and drill a hole or maybe use some of the holes that are already in place to uh, provide the uh, hole switch and the um, power connections to the rails uh, to pl be placed through the chassis. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll, uh, I'll show you when that's done. So there we go. I've uh, drilled a hole in the back using uh, a tiny drill bit on a uh, pin vise. Um, and I've placed the wires through and then pulled the uh, the lamp into position. So that's fairly sturdy as it is. I'll probably will add a little bit of uh, either super glue or polystyrene cement to the back of that just to hold it in place. Um, now I just need to um, drill another hole uh, for the wires to be placed through into the main uh, into the main body. So now that I've got the circuit working and the uh, lights flashing how it should, I now just need to get it all wired up into the vehicle and that means taking power from the track through the wheels rather than obviously being uh, soldered straight to the track, which obviously is not going to work for a working wagon. Um, the kit provided um, basically a load of these uh, spring pickups that uh, fit over the axle um, and then uh, make contact like that way. So, however, the Backman um, axles and with a lot of stock the axles are plastic so there's obviously no kind of current that's being um, drawn through those so the spring pickups aren't going to actually work. Um, so what I've done is I've picked up some of the uh, DCC concepts pickup uh, and springs so basically they are wiper style pickups I'll show you here um, that basically screw to your model with the screws that provided um, and then you basically wire up the circuit to these uh, electric pads. Oh, sorry, these metal pads. So they're basically just going to screw into this sort of area. Uh, let's see if I can just quickly show you how it's going to look. So they just screw kind of in here, um, and we'll make sure that the um, 
the copper tags here are making contact with the wheels. I'm going to do this at both ends um, just because um, I'm going to hopefully get a better and more reliable power feed that way. Um, obviously with all sorts of ele all electronics, the more pickups that you have um, onto the track, the more consistent power you're going to get and you're not going to get any uh, issues when traveling over points or any kind of dead sections of track. So for this wagon, I've only got two axles. If I was doing, say, a coach or a bogey wagon, I might try and get all four axles um, with pickups fitted just to kind of get the best traction. Uh, sorry, not the best traction, the best current and the best pickup. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm probably going to use a bit of a pin voice to basically drill um, a small kind of uh, placement hole and then I'll screw into the, uh, the plastic. And once that's done, I'll be ready to wire it all up. So I've now put the pickups in place. Um, I'm going to use this uh, hole here to basically run the wires through. I've drilled a hole in the corresponding piece that goes above it, just so uh, I can feed wires down through it without causing too much problems. Um, so I think the next thing to do is basically um, get the the main body um, all kind of wired up with the kit, um, and then I will uh, run the wires through here, and we can start wiring up down here with the soldering iron. So as you can see, the tail lamp has been fixed to the back of the uh, the guard van, uh, or the brake van, and the uh, wire basically comes through the back here into the main body. This is where all this wire is going to be housed. Um, then from there, uh, the relevant wires are going to come through uh, this hole here, through this bigger, well, bigger hole here, and then we can basically wire up under here and get everything in place. The Hall trigger, it says to get as close to the track as possible, so I will again put the hall trigger under here um, and then keep everything else up inside the uh, the brake van body, kind of keep it hidden away. So that's going to be the plan. I'm probably not going to show you exactly how it's done, it's probably going to take quite a long time um, to do, but once it is kind of ready um, and uh, the wires are kind of through here, I will uh, give you a quick update and then get it all sold up and make sure that it's working. See you in a second. Just a quick update. Um, I've found that the hole that is drilled in this section is fine for the wires, but for the hall trigger, I'm going to need to do something different. So I'm going to use this slot here, uh, which is a perfect fit for the hall trigger. So I just need to do something similar in here. So I'm going to drill out a few of the holes at each end and just kind of file out a bit of a space for the uh, hall trigger to come through. There we go. I fed the, um, the wires through the bottom here. Uh, so I've got everything I need. Um, I've got the hall trigger and I have the red and black wires coming through. Um, I've just bundled the rest up using some insulation tape just to keep it all kind of tidy. And uh, I've to give it a quick test and it, it all still works exactly how it should. So that's good. The next thing is going to be to fit the, the body shell back on. Um, and then, uh, wire, well in fact, yeah, fit the body shell back on. And then I'll wire it up, give it a quick test. If it's all working, I'll then... Uh, Put all the detailing back on. I need to, like I said, repair a couple of these little uh, um, wires or, or kind of uh, metal work pieces, and uh, yeah, then we should be uh, fairly near completion. So there we go. The wires are all up inside the body now. I found that the um, best thing to do is actually do it like this and turn it upside down and let gravity help a little bit uh, when it comes to getting everything in. I've left a lot of these wires quite long but they will just uh, push back through so there's not going to be a problem with those. Um, and yeah, I think we're uh, pretty close now. I just need to wire these up. I'm going to run um, a red wire um, from um, this pickup here onto the corresponding side and I'll do the same with a black one um, across there and then I'll just attach the red and black to one of these ends and then it's just about making sure that these pickups are, are pushed out and making contact with the metal wheels and that should in theory be uh, enough to get the circuit complete and running. So it's the following day and I've been having a few issues to be honest. Um, there are a couple of things. Firstly I find the uh, the hall switch um, a bit of a pain to be honest. Um, it's very difficult to kind of n know, especially in this testing stage, whether it's active or not and trying to get the magnet to kind of turn it on and off seems to be a bit of a, a lottery. So um, 
I've looked into it and you can actually remove it. It won't do anything other than uh, the ability to turn off the light when it's on the track uh, goes away. So basically if the um, if the unit that the light is placed in is uh, in contact with the track and the power is on, then the uh, end of tail light will be working, which for me isn't a problem. So I'm going to remove um, the hall trigger. Um, I just need to basically uh, Go back into this bundle of wire here, find where um, the purple and yellow wires of the hall trigger are uh, connected to the purple and yellow wires coming off of the uh, blue unit here, and uh, basically solder the blue, uh, purple, and yellow wires together. That will basically bypass the hall switch. In addition to that, I am having a lot of problems with the uh, DCC Concepts wiper pickups. I just can't get them to. Uh, to connect properly, um, it seems, although I'm not entirely sure because of this hall trigger issue. So I'm gonna remove the hall trigger first and then come back to it. Um, <clears throat> I've used these rather thick wires under here for a, a little bit of a, um, a quick fix, but I've now uh, sourced some thinner wire, so I will replace those with thinner wire. Uh, it will all be black, which will actually help to keep things a bit more hidden. Um, so I'm going to firstly remove the hall trigger and uh, and do some more testing and see if I can get the uh, wiper pickups to work properly. If not, um, I'll have to have a rethink. So I'll uh, I'll get back to you when the hall trigger is removed and uh, we're testing again. So here we go. This is the uh, the hall switch. I've just cut the wires about halfway along the uh, the length of wire between the insulated joint and the. Uh, the blue chip, um, basically just to give myself a little bit more space inside the, uh, the wagon. It's not the biggest in the world, so just wanted to get it uh, nice and tidy. So I basically did that, um, soldered the yellow directly to the purple and insulated the uh, white with a bit of insulation tape. Um, and then straight away, it's working. So um, I think whether it's just me not being very good at it, or I've I, I just found the, the hall trigger and the, the with and the switching on with the magnet just to be really hit or miss. Um, now one thing, um, I haven't played around with the uh, the wiper pickups at all yet, so I will show you underneath. But the the uh, pickups on this end are a little bit uh, tight. And you can hear that the wheels aren't really running free, it's just uh, pulling. And I think the ones at this end aren't actually making any contact at all. Lift this end off, nothing's happening. Um, lift this end off and it carries on so um, I just need to adjust them try and get a little contact um, on all four wheels but not as much as is down this end and once that's done I should be uh, finished so I've now kind of undone it a little bit but as you can see it's not working um, you can still hear there is a little bit of friction so it's a little bit uh, disconcerting it probably means that one side is still touching the other isn't um, not been madly impressed with these DCC concepts, uh, wiper pickups. I found that for something that's supposed to be almost frictionless, just isn't the case. Um, I'm going to probably now reattach the, the pickup that has obviously come away. Um, I'm going to have to just accept that there's going to be some friction on it, unfortunately. Um, and uh, we'll basically have to leave one, one set of pickups completely off. Um, and uh, just use one, use a bit of friction and keep the other wheel turning. I think that's probably going to be the best uh, best bet. So I'm going to do that and then I'll get back to you. So there we go, back up and running. Um, I'll work on getting this kind of a little bit more free-flowing. I think there probably is other ways, methods in terms of getting pickups and things like that um, to see how they work. So the next thing I just need to do is repair this damage. I'll probably just use a little bit of polystyrene cement or something just to uh, get it all in place. I need to reattach all the uh, additional um, parts to the sides and then uh, I'll probably be calling the wagon finished. So then I've managed to repair all of these uh, grab rails. Uh, most of the handrails have gone in okay. There's this one here at the top that just needs a teeny bit more work. I might need to open up the hole a little bit with a screw a driver or uh, take a little bit off the railings. I do find with these Backman railings that they're, they're an absolute nightmare. They're just very, very soft um, and generally the kind of ends 
uh, are slightly too big um, to get out, which is why they break in the first place. But uh, it makes putting them back in an absolute nightmare. So I might just have to trim those off or open up the hole slightly. But generally, it's all back together. It's working. So if I was going to basically do a bit of a review of the kit from DCC Concepts, um, it's kind of positives and negatives really. Um, firstly, the kit looks amazing. Um, the light is looking a little bit bright on, on screen, but kind of in real life it's, uh, it's really good. It's something that, frankly, nearly all trains in the UK uh, that aren't kind of multiple units or HSTs need. Um, you know, every train needs kind of a, a lamp on the back uh, with a red flashing light to show that the uh, the constant or the, the formation is complete so it's something that actually is quite uh, important generally the instructions are fairly easy um, and it's all kind of gone together easily and it, and it works like it, it's great there are a few issues um, firstly it's not very clear if you have that rolling stock with kind of a plastic axle like most Backman, most Hornby, um, that basically the pickups that are supplied aren't going to be uh, suitable, which is a real problem. Um, and then the uh, hall switch issue. So it might just, it probably is just me, but for me and many other modelers who are kind of quite new to this, I'm not sure what it really does, what the, what the point of it is, other than to maybe have a magnet on the track entering your kind of scenic section and that should trigger it. But I've kind of had so many issues with it that I'm not sure that it really would. Um, so that's kind of a big issue. The other issue I have, which is not really to do with this kit, but the replacement uh, um, wiper pickups just aren't um, as frictionless as I'd have hoped. Um, to be fair, with, when this kit's kind of gone in, it, it has been fairly easy, but for this, um, which is a cargo wagon from Hilgen. Um, this does have uh, metal wheels with uh, metal axles with an insulated side, and it is gone in this probably in ten minutes. So um, it's far far easier, and it's kind of the way it's supposed to have gone in. So as you can see, the spring pickup is on the uh, axle, and uh, it, it basically picks up track uh, power that way, and. The, is generally a lot more reliable um, and obviously works um, as a kind of moving free running unit so I think to be fair if you have the right stock or are willing to replace the wheel sets in yours um, this is a great kit very easy to put together very effective um, it really does look the part if you are working on other stock it's a bit more tricky and you'll need to spend a little bit more money or just make some of your own pickups and, and for a lot of modelers that would be something that they can do easily it's something that i will have to learn to do because i do want to get a lot more of these uh these uh, end of train lights on the layout so i want every train that has um a need for one to actually have one so yeah i think generally it's it's a very nice kit there are a few kind of issues some of those are kind of on my end and some are around the kit so yeah i think it's uh well worth looking into. So I think I'm going to leave it here today on St Michael's Hill. Um, thank you very much again for kind of stopping by. Um, it is massively appreciated and I hope you've been enjoying the content that uh, is going up. If you have liked what you've seen, please hit the like or, uh, button and also subscribe to the channel. We're kind of getting towards 500 subscribers now, which is just unbelievable. Um, I will probably again look to have a some sort of giveaway once we uh, reach 500. I'll have to find what uh, something to kind of give away that will be useful for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, hit that subscribe button if you uh, like what you've seen. And I'll see you again very soon on St Michael's Hill. Cheers. Goodbye. As always, thank you for checking out this week's video. If you like what you see, there's another video from St. Michael's Hill on the top left-hand corner of the screen. If you like modern image layouts, there's a new YouTube channel, Gloucester Road TMD, that I would well recommend checking out. It's a very uh, vast layout with uh, lots of interesting stock. So have a look at that by clicking on the icon below. Cheers.